This is the new Alfa Romeo Giulia and it's absolutely blooming beautiful. But then what do you expect? The Italians are famous for beautiful things. They've got beautiful buildings, beautiful artwork, beautiful women and beautiful men. Uh, anyway, this car is stunning and the best bit is that it isn't the high performance version. This is the diesel in the trim level that everyone will buy and it looks this good. Now the price is pretty good as well. You see it starts from just over £29,000 but if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk you can compare offers and buy a price you're confident in. The good news is this car isn't only gorgeous on the outside, it's also gorgeous here on the inside as well. In fact, I absolutely love the interior design of this car. First thing to note is the steering wheel. It's, it's like out of a sports car. You've even got the stop start button on it as well. I mean, it's lovely. This one's got upgraded paddle shifters and they're solid aluminium. They're the kind of thing you'd find in a Ferrari. And then there's the design itself. So it's all swoopy and lovely. The instruments are like angled towards you. It feels very, very sporty. Now equipment levels are very good as well. So the entry level car gets stuff like cruise control. You get climate control. There's three USB ports in the car. You also get auto emergency braking. Normally you get a 6.5 inch screen, but the next level up, this one, the Super, gets an 8.8 .8 inch screen and look at it. I love the way Alpha have integrated it into the dash. It's just seamless. Whereas rival cars seem to just have an iPad and plop it on the top of the dash. In terms of the infotainment system itself, well, it's not, it's not too bad at all. It's easy to whiz through the different menus. The only drawback with it is the display itself. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit low res. And I think the processor is slower than you might find in the upgraded systems that you can get in German rivals. But on the whole, it's all right. Now, if you click up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of the infotainment system. Now, the supermodel also gets a seven inch TFT screen for the driver, which has various information for you and even the directions for the sat nav. The super also has part leather seats, which are pretty nice. And that brings me on to the quality. So yeah, all the stuff that you touch is pretty nice. Some of the materials a bit low down are a bit on the cheap side and maybe fit and finish isn't quite there with the very best in class, but it's not far off. What is a problem though is in car storage, which isn't very good. So the glove box is a bit on the small side. You can fit the manual in there and probably nothing else. Then there's the door bins. So you might want to carry a bottle of San Pellegrino with you because it would go nicely with your Italian car, but no, no, it's not going to fit in there. But how about the door bins in the back? Well, what shall we see? Actually, first thing to note is this wheel arch is really intrusive when you're getting in the back of this car. Then you slump down over it. So yes, the door bin in the back, that's not going to fit in there at all. In terms of space back here, well, it's actually pretty good. So I'm sitting up dead straight, I've got lots of knee room. Headroom's all right for me, but people over six foot might find it a bit on the tight side. In terms of carrying three, it's not that great because you've got this absolutely massive hump in the floor. So the middle seat is a little bit uncomfortable and there's not much room in the footwell for everyone's feet. So you're best moving across. And on this particular car, I've got a fold down armrest with a couple of cup holders in there, which is handy. Now that brings us on to the boot. So the capacity is pretty much identical to its main German rivals. And on the whole, it's easily good enough for most people. It's not too much of a lip actually to lift stuff over. There we go, just get that out of the way. And you've got a little bit of extra storage here and maybe some under here as well. You can fold down the rear seats if you need to carry longer items. However, the shape of the boot means you can't quite cram as much in it as you can in an Audi A4, but it's close. It's a bit like the back seats, you know. It's not the best in class, but it's good enough. Now you can see more on this car's practicality by clicking up there to watch my detailed video on it, where you can see how much stuff we can fit in the boot, just how easy it is to fit a child seat in the back of this car, and what it's like with three people in the back seats. Right then, that's all the sensible stuff dealt with. It's time to hit the road. Now, one thing you need to know about this Alfa Giulia is that it's the first Alfa Romeo saloon in 25 years to be rear wheel drive. Now, the benefit of it being rear wheel drive is that you get a sensation of it pushing you along rather than pulling you along like you're doing a front wheel drive car. And that just makes it feel more sporty. And I like it for that. In terms of the handling, yeah, it handles very well. There's no car in this class that has such sharp steering. I mean, you turn the wheel a bit, and it's just darting into a corner. It's really quite lively. I don't think it has quite the finesse as a Jaguar XC, but it's not far off and it's easy on a par with the BMW 3 Series. In terms of the ride quality, well, 
even though it handles well, the suspension doesn't feel overly firm. It does absorb bumps well. What it's not so good at though is the small imperfections in the road. You, you feel it constantly kind of fidgeting and adjusting all the time. It just doesn't seem as composed as something more sensible like an Audi A4. Speaking of an Audi A4, I don't think it's as quite a travel in either. You get a bit of wind whistle here, but fortunately there's not too much tire roll. On the whole, for a relaxing cruiser, it does a pretty decent job. In terms of engines, you're gonna be able to get a 2.2 litre diesel with two power outputs, 150 horsepower, or the one in this car, which is 180 horsepower. It's got plenty of shove, 0 to 60, 7.1 seconds. Economy, well, Alpha says 67 miles per gallon. Trick Computer says 41 miles per gallon. There is one thing about this diesel though, it is quite noisy when you rev it out. Then there's the gearbox. This automatic gearbox got eight speeds on it. It's nice, it responds when you want it to. I like putting it into paddle shift mode because I just love using these paddle shifters. <laughs> like I said before, they're like those in a Ferrari. They're a really nice upgrade. In terms of other engines, you'll be able to get a 2-litre petrol with 200 horsepower or with 280, and then there's the 2.9-litre V6 Quadrifoglio with over 500 horsepower. Yeah, that should be pretty mental. And that little noise there was collision warning because I was going around a corner. It thought I was going to hit a van that was parked at the side of the road, but I clearly wasn't. So calm down, dear, it's gonna be all right. Finally, we need to talk about the visibility. And on the whole, you know, it's all right. The view at the back window is pretty good. There aren't huge rear pillars. The only issue is the pillar here. That is quite a bit of a blind spot there. Now, if you wanna see for yourself, you can click up there to watch my 360 degree passenger ride video. As you'd imagine with an Alfa Romeo, not everything is perfect. Here's five annoying things about the new Julia. There doesn't appear to be a very strong correlation between the number the climate control says and the temperature you actually feel. The emergency braking hazard lights are just a bit too sensitive. They come on even if you're just braking enthusiastically. It's a bit embarrassing. See that? That's the parking sensor going off because of the wind. We're not actually near any obstacles at all. It's a bit annoying. It looks as though the control wheel for the infotainment system has a touchpad on it, like in rival cars, but it doesn't. Also, the whole thing is a bit flimsy, and there's no shortcut buttons for things like navigation. This Alpha key is unnecessarily fat. I mean, look at it compared to one of its rivals. It means it takes up a lot of space in your pocket. It's really heavy as well. Ow. Yeah, you could probably use it as an offensive weapon. Thankfully, it's not all bad news. The Alfa Romeo Giulia has plenty of cool features to more than make up for its downsides. The Giulia was awarded the highest ever Euro NCAP safety score for adult protection. It scored 98%. Various body panels, such as the boot lid, bits of the suspension, parts of the engine are made out of lightweight aluminium, while the prop shaft, which sends power from the engine to the rear wheels, is made out of carbon fibre, and all that contributes to the fact that this car is the lightest in its class. With the V6 Quadrifoglio, you can shut down half of its cylinders at the press of a button to help save fuel. The Julia's turning circle of 10.8 metres is better than that of its rivals, and that makes it nice and easy to manoeuvre. This car has IBS. No, don't worry, it's not that kind. It stands for Integrated Braking System, and it means that from 85 miles an hour, it can stop five metres sooner than its nearest competitor, which is this distance. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to save an average of £3,000 on a new Alpha Julia. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Alpha Julia. It's a fabulous alternative to the German mainstream. And if you don't mind me, I'm just going to stay here for a bit longer and just admire it. Actually, I better leave. D don't, don't go without me. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it and subscribe to our channel and click on the video windows to watch some more of our excellent videos.